My guest tonight was a cast member on Star Night Live for five seasons. She is the creator, executive producer, writer, and star of the new TBS series, Chad. Please welcome Nassim Pedrad. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for being here in person. I know. So, so lovely to have you. And you though. look absolutely incredible. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I don't know why, when, when someone as beautiful as you is wearing something matte white, I want to spill a bowl of marinara sauce on you. <laughs> Go for it. No, and it's nothing, I swear to God, it's not hostile. Let's I just want to have a big bowl <laughs> and come over to hug you and then have it. Right? It. Isn't that the... Yeah, that's Let's... not at all hostile. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. It's coming from just the aesthetic. Andy! Hi. Oh my gosh, you really blend into that crowd. I didn't even see you. I know. Good yes. to see you. I'm very two-dimensional. <laughs> well, not Spiritually, now. Spiritually, intellectually. He was vaccinated. He was one of the first people in the United States vaccinated. Uh, but wow. Yeah, like work. as a test study? But I'm, regardless of vaccination, I'm allergic to the smell of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Surrounded by supportive people. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, start, it started when we had to be distanced, and then it just kind of like, there's extra cushions on this seat. I'm all set up out there. I've got my station. That thing truckers use to urinate. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You've got all those trucker devices. Wait, urinate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there is that other device. No, you look absolutely fantastic, and I cannot tell you what a delight it is to talk to you in person. So many people do Zoom now, but people are starting to trickle in now. And I don't know about you, I miss humanity <laughs> yes. so much. Not all humanity, because some people are dreadful. Yes, some people are. Um, <laughs> we won't go into names, but uh, you know, let's get into some names. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I have to say, uh, just having you here, what's it like for you? Because I know that you're someone that for years, you know, in New York City, you're a performer, you yeah. love crowds. How are you handling the no crowds aspect of this whole thing? It's been tough. Yeah, I'm excited to watch us all emerge, you know, as right. the pandemic nears an end. But you lived in New York for years. I mean, it's so crazy to just go from being so used to being in everyone's personal space to the complete opposite. Well, you know, I have this experience now. I don't know if you have this, but I'll just be watching TV and movies and people get on subways. Yeah. And I think, Oh, right. Remember that? I used to jump on subways, oh, yeah. and that just looks insane now. Oh, my now, gosh. That but we would all used to pack into those things? Fully, just sardines. Yeah. In fact, the last, <laughs> I have a horrifying memory associated with that. The last time I was on a subway in New York, pre-pandemic, I, <laughs> I, it was during rush hour. Yeah. I got on the subway and just super packed in. I was pressed up against this very tall man who, who he had his back against the edge of the subway car. And yeah, it was one of those pre-pandemic- So your face like, is like pushed into his chest like kind fully of? fully inside his torso, uh -huh. but like no peripheral vision whatsoever because there are people like all right. up. And I had my AirPods in, I was just like, stay in your lane, be small and just get through this. I was like eight stops away from where yeah. I was going. And I was just in there, a lot of time had passed, and finally after like, I was like, I think that's been eight stops. I just remember peeling out of this, I mean, I was right, I was engulfed by his chest. Right, like your nose is in his just sternum. inside his body, yeah, yeah, and no one's moving. It's so intimate, which yeah. again, that's just how it was back then, pre-pandemic, so I was just so up against his chest, finally peeled out of his body to see if we're at my destination, and no one was in the subway at that point. <laughs> like three people. Everyone had cleared like, out. Everyone. Probably a probably a while ago. <laughs> probably. And I, I'm like, how long was I just inside this man's body for absolutely no reason? I love the idea. I'm just picturing the completely empty car, and he's there, and you're just, <laughs> just and there's no one. No one. It's like one lady. 20 feet away, and I'm just backing out of the subway looking at him like, how could you not tell me? And he was like, ha ha, that was hilarious. Yeah. Just fully And your, found it Im so your funny. impression <laughs> is on his chest. Yes. You're absolute. <laughs> Please save me from myself. Why didn't you tell me? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, yes, I can't wait till we get back to having uh, our faces in strangers. <laughs> More experiences like Strange that. men's chess, because um, I enjoyed that as well. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about this amazing transformation that you've gone through to become Chad. Oh. Okay, Chad <laughs> is a 14-year-old boy. Yes. And it's so funny because if I didn't know you as the comedic performer, <laughs> actor that you are, 
and just saw you, I would think, this is a very attractive woman. She cannot become a 14-year-old boy. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and I have to say, this oh is... Gosh, you have. Yes. This is stunning. Uh, <laughs> I really... <laughs> Oh I don't know God. if I should congratulate you <laughs> or what, but you really have become really, Chad. I really can disappear into looking like a little dude with the right hair and makeup. Hollywood magic, man. All right, well, I just <laughs> wanted to show you. Now, Now, Chad has obviously, as a lot of 14-year-old boys do, trouble integrating yes. in the world, yes. anxieties. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say, this is a side-by-side -side of me at 14. <laughs> oh. I think we would have gotten along very, very well. <laughs> oh my God, that's so good. We're, we're both like just a little dead behind the eyes. <laughs> yes, yeah, like, I never lost that deadness behind the eyes. Uh, <laughs> we just look like we've been through so much at this point. <laughs> don't you see us sitting together in the cafeteria <laughs> uh, at, sc at, at school and like eating mac and cheese together and yes. no one is talking to us? Yes, like, you know when a horse's spirit is broken? That's what we look like. <laughs> Oh, I know what a horse's spirit looks like when it's broken. It's oh my, my writers gosh. look like that. Um, we just you turned out great, so maybe there's hope for Chad. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I'm curious. Have you had the experience of walking around as Chad? I I bring this up because <laughs> the few there have been a few times in my life when I've been made up for a sketch, mm -hmm. and I had the opportunity to walk around. Right. Once uh, I was dressed as a policeman. And it's kind of dangerous to do, because, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I, I remembered walking around as a policeman and really kind of just pretending, trying to like, channel, what's it like to be a policeman? Of course, you know, I had a toy gun and a tin badge, but it was kind of fun to inhabit that in the real world. What about you? Have you walked around as Chad? Um, I have. Not so much for fun, more out of necessity. Like, you know, when you're shooting, you're so busy doing that. If I had like an hour off, I would be like, oh, I should just pop into a grocery store and get that done. So there right. were a couple times where I was just like inside a Ralph's with a shopping cart, fully dressed as Chad, and was met with legitimate confusion from everyone. <laughs> Especially if people were far enough to not know it was a woman, you know, dressed as a little boy. They were just like, why is this small child buying so much produce? Or like, they would just catch, I'd be in like a full K-pop outfit, like, testing the ripeness of avocados. <laughs> like, just no one understood what was going on. Yeah, I would think, and it's, yeah, it's probably something they don't associate. A 14-year-old boy is not yes, gonna be doing that. very mature to you be. You know, <laughs> if, you're, if you're buying any kind of uh, hairspray or anything. <laughs> yeah, you feminine know, products. Feminine products, like, I don't know what those are, but I'm told. <laughs> well, we have a clip here from Chad, and uh, I believe this is where you're getting what looks to be a pretty amazing pair of sneakers. Correct. Anything you want to add to that, or? My f real father is in this scene. Oh, that's right. I think he, yeah. fi he fist bumps you. <laughs> he does. Look yeah. for that. The one, the guy who yeah. fist bumps this you is, is my your real dad. Father's that a, acting debut. <laughs> let me let's let's take a look at the clip, and then I want to ask you about that. Okay. All right. Here's a clip from Chad. Are these the shoes? These are the shoes. These are the shoes. These are the shoes. We are going to watch your goddamn life change. Hey. Lamb talk, uh, yeah, lamb talk, Lamborghini. Lamb talk, uh, yeah, lamb talk, Lambo. Lamb talk, yeah, lamb talk, yeah, lamb talk. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to say this. He's not bad. He's pretty and good. And that look he gives to camera on his line, <laughs> it's almost like he's a little too into it. We didn't tell him he was going to have a line because I didn't want him to get nervous. And we did about 30 takes and he finally nailed it. And now I'm worried he has the acting bug and is going to pursue this professionally. Yeah. Well, step one is, does he have a headshot? When, he, when your father gets a headshot. <laughs> There's a lot of on, on set stills of my father that day, but he's, I really, he's been acting, like asking me about what it would take to, to join the union now. Like, I'm so nervous he's gonna get a publicist and really just go rogue with this. But even on set, like, he was amazing, but he's not a trained actor, so I was well, just nervous he, he was gonna wander into frame eating a bagel at any given moment. Also, I, <laughs> just in the background, just and look. No sense. Look at the camera the way like a horse sometimes does. And just like, give a little <laughs> wink. <laughs> 
I love my, my brothers and sisters and my mother and father, but God, I've just the idea of being in a production <laughs> like with my dad, any kind oh of God. show business moment with my dad or mom. Just the two always, intersecting. Yeah, I always like thought it's like Ghostbusters. Trip. You can't cross those. <laughs> Yes. You can't cross those streams. You've got to keep them separate yeah. or a monster is created. Yeah, we survived it. We survived it, and he's, he's great. Um, and now I think he wants to do this for a living, which I'm horrified by. <laughs> yeah, I saw him just driving around in a cherry red Hummer. <laughs> <laughs> License plate, star for life. And you're like, no, just no. Just leaning into it so hard. <laughs> uh, Chad airs Tuesdays at 10.30 p.m. on TBS, and you have to watch it. It's fantastic. Nassim Pedrad, thank you so much for being thank here you in for person. Me. Yeah. It's so great to see you again. I just want to get that spaghetti sauce. Let's go. I don't know why. <laughs> I feel that way whenever I see something that white and pristine. It's tempting. You know? it's, it's tempting. It's tempting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can now. It's over. Yeah. <laughs>